Now, the lock screen shows me what's important at a glance. And one of the really cool things I want to show you is, at the bottom, you can see that apps can actually register here as well. So I can see what mail and calendar and IMs I've got. And these take advantage of a feature in Windows 8 called Connected Standby, which uses Tegra 3's low power idle mode to be always connected and up to date, even though I haven't had the machine on. And it keeps great battery life as well. So my device is ready when I am. And so when I'm ready to go, I just swipe my finger up, and I'm at picture password. Right, so this is a touch-first, secure way to log into my system. So in this case, this is a picture of my son. I'm going to draw a line on the table. I'm going to tap on his hand and draw a circle around his head. And just that easily. Wow, cute kid. I'm logged into the banks. I'll tell him that. <laughs> um, I'm logged into Start. Now, Start really is Windows 8. Um, it's where all of the things I care about are right here. So I've got tiles that represent the applications I'm interested in. They're alive with up-to-date information. And you can see here we've got a bunch of developers we've really started to work with to build interesting, compelling applications for the new Windows platform. Now, um, you know, as I pan, it sticks to my yeah. finger. Yeah, and so Aiden, Aiden, one of the one of the questions that I get a lot is that that um, you know the, the netbook when it first came out. Uh, consumers were confused by the limited capabilities of the netbook. And when they loaded applications, full out applications on these netbooks, and they expect them to be real PCs, um, full out PCs, they find that the experience was lacking. And one of the questions that people have is how do we prevent from the repeat of the netbook experience this time? Because this particular platform is actually based on an ARM processor instead of x86. If somebody were to load, for example, SAP on this tablet, um, it might not run very well, for example. And so how do we prevent that experience from happening? Sure. So in Windows 8, the, the store is actually where you're going to get applications. Mm -hmm. And so the Windows Store is a really easy place to find great applications. And it's really built to be super easy to find. And you know, this is the modern way that people get applications. Mm -hmm. They go to stores. It's really easy to navigate and really easy to it's install. It's not like I'm going to get a DVD and try to shove it somewhere. <laughs> right? That's right. Mm -hmm. There's no DVD shoving. Mm -hmm. There is no, in yeah. no install, whatever. Right? But, you, you go know, to the store, you download it. But you actually raised a good example, too, with SAP. Um, for enterprises, they can take these tablets mm -hmm. and bring them right into the enterprise and actually do loading applications the way they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Do their own deployment. So this device will be just at home in the enterprise mm -hmm. as it is on your couch. I see. Which is really important. Now, the other, the other question that I get often is, is um, you know, Windows, obviously, is that we believe long term, there are going to be multiple platforms and multiple ecosystems. There are some people whose computing experience starts um, with what they compute at home and they bring that computer to work. Some people call it the consumerization of IT. Um, other people like myself, we have computers that we use at work and we bring it home and we put all of our digital music and our photos uh, onto that device. And so the, we believe that there's multiple platforms, but some people think that, that you know, gosh, Windows and ARM is, or Windows 8 um, is a couple years behind uh, other tablets. There are hundreds of thousands of applications now available. How are you guys going to evangelize this platform and get people excited about it so that you have great applications on it? Yeah, and it's, it's a really important point. It's actually one of the things that we're going to start working yeah. on together. We've just started sharing details about our store. You know, our store is going to run at the the reach of Windows, which is the reach of the world. We're going to launch in 200 markets when we launch Windows 8 in more than 100 languages. We're going to let you use whatever business model you want. Free, paid, you can use our commerce platform, you can use your own. Mm -hmm. Which for things like game developers and all sorts of different um, developers out there, it's really important for them to use the business model that works for them. Now, if you use okay, so if, you're, if you are a content provider and you would like to build a content platform around Windows Store, mm -hmm. and, and you would take care of the economics yourself and, and the commercial engine yourself, um, they benefit from from that in a special way? That well, they, can, they don't have to give you 30%? That's right. They okay. can bring whatever model works for them, which is really important. Now, if they use our model, mm -hmm. they can get up to 80% of the revenue back, no earning more in every single dollar that goes to the Windows Store, mm -hmm. meaning that they can operate their business just that much more efficiently with that much more revenue. Um, and you know, these, this whole store brings new applications like this sample app. And one of the really important things is this is an RSS reader. 
Now, this is full screen and immersive, and it doesn't look like a Windows application today. Mm -hmm. And it's written on this new platform called the Windows Runtime, which is important because it lets a developer use a language they know. So this is actually written in HTML5 and JavaScript. Yet it takes advantage of all of the power in all four cores of this uh, Tegra 3 processor, the sensors, and you can just imagine the sorts of powerful experiences you can build. That's fantastic. But you can also use C mm -hmm. or C++ mm -hmm. and build the sorts of compelling games that you showed off earlier. Well, we all, we all know that, that uh, Windows and Microsoft has the best developer development platform on the planet. And I think that, that is, that is, a, that is a, a, a advantage that Microsoft has and, and an asset that gets invested in over the long term. And now with the, with the Windows Store and the economics and the flexibility that you guys are bringing, I think it's going to be pretty fantastic. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. In the next couple of months, we're going to be using units just like this and start working with developers to build a whole bunch of very compelling applications and experiences for Windows. I can't wait to ship it. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank you, Jason. That's great. Congratulations.